Thanks for being with us. Always fun having you here. See you next time on The Chase Australia. Tonight, Whoa. rioters clash with police in New York. As protesters and officers face off outside a locked down White House. Australia in recession for the first time in 29 years, but the share market surges despite the shrinking economy. First her dad, now little Willow Dunn's stepmother charged over the Cannon Hill girl's death. Five luxury boats burn in an arson attack at a Gold Coast marina. Cheap flights released to reignite tourism in Queensland, with more to follow. And corner store inspiration as Coles reveals the future of grocery shopping. Live from Brisbane, 7 News with Sharon Gadella and Max Butcher. Good evening. Police have descended on American cities, cracking down on looting and rioting as curfews roll across the country. But tonight, at 24 hours after the president threatened military domination, officers have changed tack. Peaceful protests are allowed to go on well after lockdown. Whoa! Hours after curfew, police attacked. <laughs> Looters beaten and rounded up by protesters. Lockdowns ignored in the face of immense force in the capital. It is now after curfew, but the only police that we can see are behind this fence. On the other hand, we've seen hundreds of protesters flooding the scene, wanting to be here for this moment. Before a fortified Lincoln Memorial Thank you. and a padlocked White House. <laughs> The crowd is defiant as night came, facing off against a wall of arms. We're not leaving! Who start firing through the fence. <laughs> on those who won't leave. Hollywood Boulevard. Police surge early, standing on the stars. National Guard boots on the Walk of Fame and Sunset Boulevard. Reporter Paul Caddock there as lockdown loomed. Again, how quickly things can change just a few minutes after Hollywood Boulevard was full of protesters, peaceful protesters. Something has happened and now it is full of police. I can't breathe! I can't breathe! As curfews rolled across the country, city after city rallied back. From Broadway to Portland, protesters filled streets. And tonight, for hours, peaceful marches were left to move. <laughs> New York's 11pm curfew last night, disastrously late. America's largest police department lost control. The NYPD and the mayor did not do their job last night. Look at the videos. It was a disgrace. I believe that. Tonight, lockdown came at eight. New York's refused the National Guard, choosing to stamp out violence itself. Shifting tactics, mostly avoiding combat, the night after President Trump threatened military domination. Today, he drove past protesters. On his way to another religious moment at the shrine of St Paul II. With the First Lady, a photo opportunity slammed by religious leaders for a second day. The president held up the Bible at St John's Church yesterday. I just wish he opened it once in a while. Asked to comment on his neighbour's violence, Canada's uh. Prime Minister took 20 long seconds to find the words. We all watch in horror and consternation what's going on in the United States. Into the night, police rounded up lawbreakers. They're just uh, going one person at a time. It's not over, but night eight is the calmest so far. In Washington, D.C., Amelia Brace, 7 News. And Amelia filed this update as the president prepares to use more force.
Yeah, Sharon, Donald Trump said that he would use military force and there are now soldiers here on standby. In fact, the Pentagon has mobilised around 1,600 active military here in the D.C. area. Now, as for the president, he spent the day uh, praising himself on Twitter for bringing this situation under control. But it's fair to say there is still violence across the country. Uh, overnight, we did see a police officer shot dead by a looter in St. Louis and that looting is continuing in many states but it's definitely fair to say that today was much more peaceful and certainly much more calm. Amelia Brace reporting there. The US Embassy has released a statement following the police attack on Amelia and her cameraman Tim Myers in Washington. It says freedom of the press is a right Australians and Americans hold dear. We take mistreatment of journalists seriously, as do all who take democracy seriously. Minneapolis has taken the first small step in addressing decades of police brutality targeting black people. It's launched a sweeping civil rights investigation of its police department as calls grow for all of the officers there when George Floyd was killed to be charged. In a city George Floyd once called home. Thank you. They marched. 60,000 people, some on horseback. Demanding justice for a son, a brother, a father. He will never see her grow up, graduate. He will never walk her down the aisle. Roxy Washington and their six-year-old daughter Gianna remembering George and demanding charges be laid against all four officers. They get to go home and be with their families. Gianna does not have a father. Donald Williams was there when Mr Floyd was killed. It still haunts him. He's not moving. And like so many in America, he thinks they should all face justice. Yeah, they killed the human being. We expect the other officers to be arrested before George Floyd is laid to rest. That will happen at a private service in Houston early next week. Joe Biden expected to attend. This is a city that has lost faith and trust in its own police force. The governor announcing today it's filed a civil rights charge against the department, investigating a decade worth of conduct. So today is a step towards that deconstruction of systemic racism. Putting America's painful history of lethal force back into focus. Just last month, Breonna Taylor, a paramedic, killed while she slept. Botham Jean murdered inside his apartment by a white police officer. Walter Scott shot in the back as he ran from police after being pulled over for a broken taillight. Eric Garner put in a chokehold in New York. He suffocated. Tonight, new video from Florida. You got your knee on my man's Come on, neck, man. man. That officer now placed on administrative leave and in Atlanta. We felt like we were going to die in that car. Four more officers charged, accused of using excessive force to arrest two college students heading home from a protest. This is an entire generation that has to deal with brutality and injustice and wrongdoing for nothing. But for the daughter of George Floyd, hope her suffering will count for something. In Minneapolis, Ashley Mullaney, 7 News. People around the world have marched in solidarity with US protesters as anger over the death of George Floyd goes global. In Paris, demonstrators took to the streets shouting justice, defying a police ban, sparking clashes with riot squads. An anti-racism protest in Brazil also ended in violence, with officers firing rubber bullets and tear gas to disperse the crowd. Peaceful protests were also held in Israel and Berlin, and closer to home in Sydney. Hundreds of people marched in the city centre last night in solidarity with the US protesters. Australia is in recession for the first time in almost 30 years. The summer bushfires and coronavirus crisis have combined to shrink the economy in the first few months of 2020. Gross domestic product fell 0.3 of a percent, slightly better than economists had predicted, but Treasurer Josh Frydenberg warns the worst is yet to come. 
the admission Australia had to have. Is Australia in recession today? Well, the answer to that uh, is yes. The first in 29 years, the economy battered by bushfires locked down by the coronavirus. This was the economist's version of Armageddon. Economic growth shrank in the March quarter, negative 0.3 of a percent. Two negative quarters make a recession, but the Treasurer isn't waiting for the June result. The June quarter, the economic impact will be severe. Far more severe than what we have seen today. This long run of growth was created by Hawke and Keating, it was defended by Rudd and Swan, and it ends under Morrison and Frydenberg. The figures showing spending down 3.4%, savings up 5.5%. This is the largest quarterly decline in consumption in 34 years. Not in everything, though. Australians smoked less, tobacco down 3.9%, but drank more, alcohol up 3.5. It's still going to be the worst contraction we've seen since the 1930s Great Depression. Politically, Josh Frydenberg made a smart decision declaring a recession today, knowing he'd only face three months of uncomfortable questioning when the answer is obvious. And when compared with the rest of the world, Australia's economy is proving resilient. The Treasurer hinting the $1,500 a fortnight JobKeeper allowance might be reduced after this month's review. Bearing in mind that some people are getting paid more than they would otherwise get. Three decades since this... This is a recession that Australia had to have. Now, the recession Australia couldn't avoid. Mark Riley, 7 News. Police have made another arrest over the death of Willow Dunn. Mac Lyon, her stepmother, has been charged. Shannon White was brought here to the Brisbane Watch House this morning, Sharon, after being charged with murder over the death of her four-year-old stepdaughter at Cannon Hill more than a week ago. It's alleged White left a severely malnourished and mistreated Willow to die in her cot. Willow's biological father, Mark Dunn, is also facing the same charge. Police confirming today the little girl was known to child safety as pressure mounts on the state government to overhaul a system that had already failed. Caboolture toddler Mason Lee. Every day, Deborah Mookie checks the mail. She's reminded of the little boy from across the road. You just don't know what goes on behind closed doors, you know, until it's too late. 22-month-old Mason Lee's death in 2016 was painful and prolonged. Felt that I should have done more being a neighbour. I don't know. I felt like I let him down. A coroner's report now finding Mason was let down by the Child Safety Department in nearly every possible way. One of the most tragic child protection cases in history. It makes for very difficult reading. Still, the Premier refused to let the public read the government's own report into the toddler's death. What's your reason is for not releasing that panel? Because they're not released. Despite this promise three years ago. Let me make it very clear. The report will be released in full following the trial. The Premier needs to get her government out of hiding and do what the department is meant to do, and that is protect kids from harm. 21 child safety staff failed Mason. Child safety. They need to stop just working business hours Monday to Friday. The house where Mason died has new owners, but four years on, the family, who now call it home, remain haunted by those horrors. Their father telling me his children still won't sleep in Mason's old room. Mason had ice in his system. Still, one in three children known to child safety have a parent addicted to the drug. We're going to see increases in parental substance misuse and increasing financial pressure. Putting more children at risk. Mac Lyon, 7 News. Police suspect arsonists are to blame for a huge blaze that gutted three boats at a Gold Coast marina. Witnesses saw two men throwing something at one of the yachts, igniting the inferno that quickly spread. Just before midnight at Hope Harbour, residents woke to the sound of explosions. That's gas. Flames and smoke billowing into the air, fanned by strong winds gutting boat after boat. Oh, a beautiful boat. Cool. When fire crews arrived, the entire marina was under attack. The flames we could see from uh, yeah, several kilometres away uh, before we got here. Moments earlier, one witness saw two men scale a fence and throw what they believe was petrol at one boat. One in the middle there sunk. Three were destroyed, two more badly damaged. 
After the first one went on flame, all the rest just started catching on fire. It was horrible. Oh, it was huge. I, mean, I thought the whole precinct was going to go up. This morning, as detectives launched an investigation, police divers had a grim task. Given that we haven't been able to contact all of the owners of the boats, um, that's just something that we really have to make sure um, that we're comfortable that there is no one on those vessels. Fortunately, they found nothing but the wreckage of two sunken boats. Now the hunt for two arsonists. Uh, one is described as Caucasian, heavy set, with a beer gut um, and long, dark hair. Both seen running from the burning marina, leaving behind a damage bill expected to exceed $2 million. On the Gold Coast, Amanda Abate, 7 News. As if times weren't tough enough, heartless thieves are targeting businesses in Logan. Police say they're investigating 23 break-ins in the commercial and retail precinct around Grand Plaza Shopping Centre. TK Maxx and Harvey Norman are among the victims. One person is assisting police with inquiries, but officers are urging anyone who recognises these men to come forward. You don't often see an Australian judge unleash on criminals, but two young men copped an extraordinary spray as they were sentenced for stabbing drug lord Tony Mockbell. The judge's blunt speech cutting through legal jargon in a powerful message so many people could learn from. Tara Bennett and Eldaya Tawera nearly killed drug lord Tony Mockbell to impress their mates. Today, along with an extra nine years in jail, they got a harsh dose of reality. You may think you're heroes within the jail, but do you think in 20 years' time that's going to matter? When you're out on the street desperately trying uh, to score and nowhere to live... Judge Liz Gaynor predicted a bleak future for the two young thugs. You'll have six kids by six different mothers... And if you're still using, you'll probably assault them. They'll be kids you never see. Her extraordinary seven-minute spray didn't let up on them or their gang of Pacific Islander inmates. Bennett and Tuera stabbed Mockbell seven times, putting him in a coma. But according to Judge Gaynor, it's not reprisals they should fear, rather a dismal future as ex-con losers. Nowhere to sleep because everyone's sick of you. Because you burned everyone off. While the judge didn't hold back, just how much sunk in is questionable. They joked and smiled as she dressed them down, enjoying their newfound notoriety. The only reason you are getting any attention is because it was Tony Mockbell. But at the end of the day, you two young blokes, two on one, mauled and maimed a 53-year-old man. Legal sources say the spray is unusual, but not out of line. You will end up drug-rattled, lonely old men. Tegan Dolling, 7 News. The Lord Mayor has called for an investigation into the allocation of state government funding to councils across Queensland. Brisbane will receive $5 million from the $200 million COVID support package. What we are seeing is $4 per person in Brisbane being given by the state government, uh, yet some councils are getting up to $84 per person. 135,000 Brisbane residents have lost their jobs because of COVID-19. The attempted revival of Queensland tourism has been boosted by cheap flights into the regions. It's another move aimed at getting the industry off the canvas after the COVID-19 crisis. It's the jewel in the Queensland tourism crown. If you want to see natural beauty, if you want to see paradise, come to the Whit Sundays. Paradise soon accessible for a pittance. Fares starting from just $99. A partnership between government and Alliance Airlines to commence cheap flights between Brisbane and the Whit Sundays, a region reeling from the COVID shutdown and desperate for business to come back. We're encouraging everyone from the southeast corner to come up and support the Whit Sundays during a tough time. Local tourism economies are hurting throughout the state, so the government is keen to spark a flying frenzy. They are now in discussions with multiple airlines about opportunities across Queensland. Hopefully we'll see uh, more announcements over the coming week. Until then, the road beckons for those eager to explore. Absolutely, just hanging out to get out on the road. A limber grey nomad Paul Brearley is hitching up the caravan <laughs> and, like many of his mates, ready to roll out and roll into regions. All the small towns are all suffering and, um, you know, it just gives them a bit of heart and a bit of help, so loving it.
And when it comes to help, this place needs it more than most. Binnaburra Lodge was burnt to the ground in September's fires, but is now rising from the ashes. Construction commencing on a new resort to open from August. Another step on Queensland's tourism road to recovery. Joel Dry, 7 News. As we've heard, the Australian economy is shrinking, but the share market still surged today because investors had expected figures that were much worse. Gemma Acton, how strong was the market today? Well, Max, proving once again it's all about expectation when it comes to the share market. The ASX 200 today added 106 points to finish 1.8% higher. But it was the Aussie dollar that really stole the spotlight today. That reached a five-month high of 69.8 US cents before it softened a little bit and it still failed to break through that psychological barrier of 70 US cents, well, for now at least. Meantime, it was more bad news for car dealers. We saw new vehicle sales drop by more than a third in May compared to a year earlier. We saw fewer than 60,000 vehicles sold across the country. Only Toyota and Kia were able to steal some market share from their rivals as all brands saw a drop in sales. Thank you, Gemma. Now to the weather. And Tony, it was the coldest morning of the year in parts of the southeast. Yes, it was, Sharon. A great morning for a sleep in as those temperatures plummeted, but there was also some reward for early rises in the form of this crisp sunrise, as viewed from the Mount Cutha lookout. It offered up some great views of Brisbane City, but with the temperature dropping, well, you needed to be prepared with some thick jackets or maybe even a blanket. Further inland, Mitchell, Injun, Roma and Kingaroy all dropped below freezing, with frost reported across the southern inland. A little bit warmer tonight. I'll be back soon with the forecast. Thanks, Tony. Our landmark pubs get set to reopen. What has to be done before the crowds are allowed to return this weekend? Good news for learners when you can finally take your driving test. How a koala and a wombat have become lockdown besties. And before the weather, big deals on cruise holidays, how the industry is trying to lure back travellers. Seven News. Brought to you by Aussie. Home. It's not just a place we're stuck in. It's home cooked meals, home workouts, home schooling, working from home, home movie nights, and movie days. It's see you when I get home. Your home means more than ever, and so does having the right home loan. To understand your options, go straight to Aussie. We'll help ensure you have the right loan for right now. His dad doesn't have long left. If I can see him in his element doing what he loves, then I'll always have something great to remember him by. I've never played in front of my son before, so that makes this the biggest gig of my life. 19 years, six months and 23 days. It was the day that I found out that I was a dad. This is for you, my son. Home and Away, weeknights on 7. Om Tanke isn't just a word. It's a lens through which you can view the world and see things differently. It's a new perspective, a considerate, more caring one. Om Tanke shines a brighter light on the things that really matter, and that helps us focus on making those things better, on making the world better. For everyone, Om Tanke. We welcome you to try it. Volvo. With over 25 million instant scratch its wins last year, <laughs> it can happen anywhere, anytime. Play today. We spend one third of our lives at work, another third in dreamland, and that sacred last third here. From home time to sleepy time, IKEA designs around life's precious moments. So wake up happy every morning, even Mondays. Make mess, mohawks, and laugh until your belly hurts. Because with IKEA, there really is no place like home. Are you ready to get back to life as you love it? Get full digital news access plus weekend home paper delivery for just $5 a month for the first three months. Search the Courier Mail offer today. 
Design, performance, exceptional value. A Mazda stands out. At the Mazda Standout End of Financial Year event, get a Mazda CX-3 Neo Sport from 23990 Drive Away. Search Mazda offers now. Looking for some good news? Huh? Well, HBF didn't postpone their 2020 premium increase. They're the only major health insurer to cancel it altogether. Discover HBF Health Insurance today. Tasty, affordable and delicious. What's for dinner in the next break with Coles? Learner drivers will soon be able to apply for their P-plates, with the state government giving practical driving tests the green light once again. They'll restart on June 15 after being suspended in March with new safety measures in place including mandatory screening questions. Tests will be conducted six days a week to help catch up on the backlog which is in the thousands. Pubs and clubs will have 24 hours to read the fine print on new COVID safe plans released tomorrow before they reopen to large crowds on Friday. Their news can be divided into sections by bollards, planters or petitions to seat 20 people each. Beer off tap and straight to the table, no customer complaints here. Cheers! This is the first time I've been out in like three months. But restrictions better suited to fine dining are putting a strain on pubs and clubs. It's a really labour intensive model. Um, and, you know, we have to put on like twice as many staff to serve half the amount of people. You have to eat, drink, stay and pay at your table. From Friday, venues can accommodate multiple pods of 20 people but need staff allocated to each. Sandstone Point Hotel will host 160 patrons but put that into pre-COVID perspective. We can have up to 3,000 people show up on a normal Saturday or Sunday, depending on the weather. In an area that would usually hold 300, the Wickham will reopen to 20 loyal customers at a time. We're almost fully booked for the first weekend. Plus creating a pop-up bottle shop to generate some extra money. It's a step in the right direction, but for big pubs, this isn't sustainable. And with the changes to stage two, there's now confusion over what stage three really means. Even if it was a one person per four square metres, even that would help. Come Friday, the Eaton's Hill Hotel will host 120 people. The Regatta, Fridays and Everton Park, 80. Beachmere and Cleveland Sands Hotel will take 60 patrons. The same as Finn McCool's. Get down here this weekend. But make sure you book. Georgie Chumley, 7 News. Now, just a warning, the images in this next story are extremely cute. A koala called Elsa and a wombat named Hope have become unlikely best friends at the Australian Reptile Park. It started when Hope was put in the koala enclosure while hers was being cleaned. Well, they struck up a friendship, greeting each other with Eskimo kisses on the nose. They obviously didn't get the memo about the need for social distancing. Social distancing. <laughs> it's very cute though, isn't it? <laughs> the battle over suburban billboards why residents say this is the line in the sand and anywhere in Brisbane could be next. Pools, libraries and movie theatres, where you'll be able to go this weekend. The cheap and green new way to fly, a fully electric passenger plane developed on the Gold Coast. And after sport, the changing face of grocery shopping, the big supermarkets looking to the past for inspiration. The new hacking gangs targeting Queenslanders, extorting and holding victims to ransom. What you need to check now, coming up on 7 News. Hello Angela, are you ready for Monday 7.30? I came from Africa with nothing but a suitcase. My family is everything. I love my children. At home and my mom. At work, I'm a boss. I can be all that and more. I gotta be me. <laughs> I am Big Brother, and I've chosen you. I'll do anything to win. Oh, really? How do you plan to eliminate the others? I'll sweet talk you during the day, and I'll vote you out at night with a smile. <laughs> mean, but I like it. <laughs> I am Big Brother, and I'll see you Monday, 7.30. On 7. Hi, Australia. I'm Luke Mangan. Tonight is all about real food, comfort food. My roast pork chop, caramelised apple and spiced pumpkin. Let's get cooking. Okay, step one, you need half a butternut pumpkin, a bit of salt, some pepper, and you can spice it up with anything you like. Tonight, we're gonna use some fennel seeds and get them in there and some good olive oil. That's gonna go into an oven of about 200 for about half an hour or so, or until tender. All right, for the apples, peeled. Now we just quarter them, take that little core out, 
Okay, next step, we're gonna get these two beautiful Aussie pork cutlets. Bit of olive oil, salt and pepper, and today I'm gonna to use some coriander seeds. Ground coriander on both sides, that'll give it a nice little bit of flavor. And what we do then, a good splash of olive oil to a medium to hot pan. Now, we wanna get these beautiful pork chops in this pan for about two to three minutes on both sides, and then we're gonna throw in those apples. Just put in about a teaspoon of butter with those apples, and they go in to the oven about 180 or so for about 10 to 15 minutes, depending on the thickness of the pork. So that's just out of the oven, about 10 to 12 minutes. I'm gonna add a bit more butter. I'm gonna add the sugar, which is gonna help caramelize the apples. I'm gonna add a little bit of this brandy, if you like brandy, and then a little bit of vegetable stock. And just bring that to the boil, and that will be your beautiful sauce for these pork chops. And now, a little bit of broccolini with chili. So in a medium heat pan, little splash of olive oil. I'm gonna throw in a few bits of broccolini. I like just to toast or roast this broccolini in a pan. Good pinch of salt. You just gently do that for about three to five minutes. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of chili in there now and a splash of vegetable stock. So we're ready to serve. Look at this pumpkin, Jess. Scoop that out, how good is that? Then we've got the broccolini with a bit of chili. And then to finish, pork chop with that beautiful caramelized apples and that amazing sauce. And there you have it, Australia, my roast pork chop, caramelized apples, spiced pumpkin, enjoy. The installation of a billboard on a well-known Brisbane street has residents warning other suburbs could suffer the same fate. Council says signed permit systems haven't kept up, kept up with the times and is promising to fix the issue. On Paddington's busiest street, perched above a coffee shop, a new LED billboard that has residents up in arms. The community was not consulted. Protesting on Latrobe Terrace and warning local government laws allow billboards like this to pop up anywhere in Brisbane. There's another huge mega billboard going up down the end of uh, Given Terrace on the corner of Latrobe. Uh, it's a very much a derogation of the character of the neighbourhood. Brisbane City Council conceding there's an issue. This is a permit that's been allowed through the Planning Act, so it was at a council officer level. I see it as a permit system that probably hasn't stayed up with the times. A review of signage approval processes has been ordered, putting a halt to other applications. We are taking the steps to make sure it comes back as a planning instrument to see how we can make sure that not only local councillors but local residents can have their say as well. Still, community members want this billboard taken down and are gathering signatures for two separate petitions to council. The advertiser behind the billboard says they followed proper processes and that the sign is a third smaller than originally intended. Rosanna Kingsun, 7 News. If you're looking forward to the weekend, we have good news. From swimming pools to libraries and even cinemas, businesses across the southeast are reopening their doors as restrictions across the state continue to ease. For the animals at Lone Pine, it's only two more sleeps until visitors return. The koala sanctuary reopening this Friday for small group tours. Our keepers have been working really hard to uh, maintain the behaviours that our animals had uh, before we had to, to close the doors. Behaviours swimmers were rediscovering at the valley today, the only council pool to reopen so far. We're just waiting for the state government to give the tick off to our industry COVID plan and we'll have about 13 of our pools ready to, ready to go. Temperature checks and pre-bookings essential for limited lanes. The bulkheads that we've got here, they can pop up and down, so to allow us to have more people in the pool, we've popped them both up, which means we can get 16 in the pool. All 33 council libraries have now reopened, limited to 20 people with mandatory hand cleaning. And if you borrowed a book from the library before the lockdowns, you now have until the end of the month to renew or return. If you don't feel like reading, New Farm 6 Cinemas reopens this Friday, offering a special session for you and 19 friends. So for $22 per person for 20 people, then they could have their own cinema. With plenty of space to socially distance. Elliot Chipper, 7 News.
The world's largest commercial all-electric passenger aircraft has taken to the skies. Built on the Gold Coast, the nine-seater Cessna e-caravan costs less than $20 an hour to power. Sitting on the tarmac in Seattle, the Cessna e-caravan is one of a kind. A major milestone in terms of advancing electric aviation. The first nine-seat commercial aircraft taking off on a 30-minute test flight covering 160 kilometres, powered solely by electricity. We want to show the, the capacity of an all-electric future even today. This flight cost just $6 to power, a fraction of the three to $400 which could have been spent on fuel. 30 minutes of flight time, you get an equivalent amount of charge time. E-flight pioneers say their engines reduce overall costs by up to 80% per hour. It's hoped the e-caravan will be in commercial use by next year, but it will be some time before electric flights are seen above the Gold Coast. They'll first be offered in the UK, the US and Europe. Our whole uh, goal as a company is around the connecting communities. Magniex is still testing how far its e-caravan can fly before needing a recharge. Around 45% of global flights are less than 800 kilometres. It'll start to take advantage of the benefits of electrification. Including zero emissions, a major benefit for the environment. Isabel Mullen, 7 News. More than half of us have been targeted by cyber hackers. Next, advice on how to protect yourself and your livelihood. A new twist in the Tiger King saga that's taken the world by storm. Big savings, what cruise companies are offering to lure travellers back. And how volunteers work together to save a stranded dolphin. You know you'll never let anything bad happen to me. This is a very, very dangerous politician. He's hiding something. There's been an inside man all along. You have been drama. Bodyguard, tonight on 7. This end of financial year, get the Hyundai Tucson with style, impressive performance and intuitive technology. Now with a $1,000 bonus. Hyundai's end of financial year sale. See it to believe it. If you're worried about your actions or relationship, contact Men's Line for free confidential advice and counselling online and by phone 24-7. There's no place for abuse or domestic violence. Help is here. Authorised by the Australian Government, Canberra. Centrum provides multiple health benefits in just one tablet. Centrum, complete from A to Zinc. Grant retired recently and built his dream home. Because his house is less than five years old, he could pay less on his home and contents insurance. Yui, it's home and contents insurance for individuals like Grant. Yui, you insured. Zimalate? Natural Zimmel, the easy to digest milk. You'll love Zimmel because Zimmel loves you. At Coles, we're helping lower the cost of dinner with the Coles boneless pork leg roast. Down, down to eight dollars fifty a kilo. Save one dollar fifty a kilo for delicious roast pork recipes. Head to coles.com.au. Coles, good things, great value. Drive now, pay later on selected Volkswagen Amarox and vans. Hit the ground rolling with your first three monthly repayments on us. Plus, get a 1.99% interest rate. Volkswagen. Take Stradbroke Day to the Ned's level. Back a horse in any race at Eagle Farm this Saturday, and if it runs second or third, get up to $50 back in bonus bets. Run second or third, get a bonus back with Ned's. Take it to the Ned's level. 
The finance and the share market finished at a new three-month high, up 1.8%. The ASX 200 added 106 points. By now, pay later company Zip surged another 20%. Following yesterday's 40% jump, it closed $1.15 higher. The Australian dollar rose to its highest level in six months, buying 69 US cents and $1.08 New Zealand. And drivers should fill up while cheap fuel is still available. The average cost of unleaded petrol is $1.19 in Brisbane and rising. He's currently serving a 22-year prison sentence for plotting to kill his arch-rival. Now the star of the Tiger King documentary series has been forced to hand over his zoo to his intended victim, Carol Baskin. A judge found Joe Exotic had fraudulently transferred ownership of the Oklahoma Wildlife Park to his mother to avoid previous legal fees to Ms Baskin. Under the ruling, animals must be removed from the property within 120 days. According to cyber safety experts, around half of us have had our personal information breached in an online cyber attack. More and more keyboard criminals are stealing our information from big companies and holding it hostage for a ransom. My budget has helped more than 100,000 clients recover from debt. Now the company is the one needing help from cyber security experts, falling victim to a malware attack which caused a system outage for more than a week. It's one of many well-known companies recently targeted by international cyber criminals. Toll Group had its server hacked on their employee addresses and payroll information. What we've seen is a very despicable and uh, vindictive act by these criminals. They encrypt the data hold it for ransom, demanding payment or risk it being released. Extortion, using our passwords, bank details, sensitive information as their hostage. To check if your information has been involved in any data breach, the advice is to type your email into this website called Have I Been Pwned? And within seconds, you should get an answer. And there you go. My information has been compromised in three separate breaches. You've really got to look at what is it about you that's been breached. If it's your password, well, obviously change that on the service that's been breached and change all the other places you've used it. Protecting yourself in an online world. Tristan Vorius, 7 News. After hours of hard work and a lot of heavy lifting, a group of animal lovers has successfully rescued a stranded bottlenose dolphin at South Arm Beach in Hobart. Rescuers helped hoist the animal into a sling and carry it back up to a dinghy ready for release. The dolphin was freed several hundred metres offshore to cheers from onlookers. Coming up, the big supermarkets seeking old-style inspiration for a new shopping experience. And the huge savings on offer as the cruise ship industry tries to woo back travellers. But let's check today's sport now. Here is Webby. Thank you, Sharon. Hello, everyone. Ahead, Australia's Olympic swim coach puts family first. A boost for the baby Broncos from the ex-skipper who helped shape the club. And another accolade for the Lions great who always put team first. Beyond the coronavirus crisis. We'll show you the road out. Your family, your job, your child's education, your money, your home. Getting Queensland back on track. Your essential guide for the better days ahead. Only on 7 News, every night at 6. You are the best of the best. In the grand final challenge. Big calls, big risks. They'll build a home from scratch. They're going to do whatever it takes. The toughest race to the finish ever. It is just the hardest race to the finish line we've ever had. The winner takes it all. The winner of our high stakes grand final is... Grand final challenge. Coming up next. The power's in your hands and at your feet. The BMW 320i sedan from 69900 drive away. Joy is coming. Stick boredom on the bench. Footy's back. For every Thursday and Friday NRL game this round, place a head-to-head -head bet and if your team wins by six or more, we'll double your winnings in bonus bets up to $50. Tab, long may we play. 
While we're all having nights in, make yours a big night in. Because this year you could win up to $8,000 worth of prizes from a huge range. Woolworths Big Night In. There's a new winner every day. <laughs> Kill bacteria that can cause sore throats fast with Betadine Sore Throat Gargle. Or treat and relieve with new Betadine Gargle and Lozenges Kit. Far North Queensland is bracing itself for more wet weather after days of heavy rain. Hi. Hi Barbara. They've had 140 millimetres in the last 24 hours. Ooh. After Townsville flooded, Barbara and the team were some of the first on the ground, lodging claims and getting people's lives back on track. That's the Suncorp spirit. Build a better Hamptons home for less with Clarendon Homes. Enjoy a five bedroom and five living zone Hampton style home from just $249,800 with Aspire inclusions. Hurry, limited time only. Stick boredom on the bench. Footy's back. For every Thursday and Friday NRL game this round, plays a head to head bet and if your team wins by six or more, we'll double your winnings in bonus bets up to $50. Tab, long may we play. Darkness and day and light Pleasure like a smile Experience the delicious intensity of Lent excellence The finest dark chocolate crafted to perfection By the Lent Master Chocolatier Excellence from Lent A cloak of secrecy surrounds Broncos hooker Jake Turpin, but there are reports tonight he has a leg fracture and faces up to a month out. It'll clear the way for Toowoomba's Corey Pax to debut against the Premiers. The Broncos rolled up on Match Eve for a private session inside Suncorp with a very public message stinging their ears. If you want to be the best, you've got to beat the best. A task made tougher when Roosters hitman Victor Radley beat his dangerous throw charge. It appears Pake's will debut a baptism of fire. He's had a lot of raps from the club. He's been here since 13 year old, so... There's a lot of proud coaches here and obviously his family are very proud too. Coach Seabold's rammed home the Yields loss has to be an aberration. We can't hide behind anything. Like last week was inexcusable, but we turned over too much footy. The Roosters didn't and they'll get better. We'll get the performance we want on Thursday night because they're hungry for more. And he's bringing a Queenslander back home. The master coach infatuated with big Lindsay Collins. He's got lots of power, but he can play long minutes. So he's, he's very quick and he's very fit. Ready to menace a Broncos laced with debutantes and newbies. All the pressure essentially is on the Roosters and, and it, it, you know, Broncos have got a, a great, young, fit team that are ready to go. Advice worth heeding. 18 years ago, an excited Walker was asked to lead the original baby Broncos against the Tigers. In the north, Jason Tamalolo's injury makes way for another feel-good story. Teenager Tom Gilbert debuts from the bench. One of my staff members rolled back to see if I was OK because I obviously must have let out this almighty scream of excitement. A star in rugby for grammar and a cute cup revelation. I think his work rate, his willingness to roll his sleeves up and get into it, that they were traits that stood out even when he was at school. And there's a soft side to this powerful, aggressive forward. He still returns to grammar to help the new boarders when his flourishing footy career allows. Now here's Gillian Webby with around four tips. Hear that, Gilly? My footsteps closing in on your lead. Fair dinkum. You got four last week. Only beat me by one. We both tipped the Bronx. Got done. Not this time. Oh, you are a fair weather friend. Now, I'm sticking fat. And the same with the Warriors. What a win. I reckon they'll back it up, too, against the disappointing Panthers. Speaking of which, I would have hated to be a Storm player this week. Bounce back time. Yes, Trevor. Bunnies bounce. So it's south for me. And I'm backing Manly to shock the eels. Match of the round. Parra's got the best defence in three decades. So I'm tipping the blue and gold and the same in Townsville. Well, even with no Tamalolo, I'll join you on the Cowboys wagon and the green machine, I reckon, will roll through Newcastle. The Knights were gutsy last week, but the Raiders were better and I love what Harry Grant did for the Tigers. Yes, they were impressive and I reckon the Dogs will maul the Saints. There's my lead extended further. The Dragons too classy. Good luck with your tips. 
The Lions' latest Hall of Famers encouraged the class of 2020 to keep following his lead as they aim to improve on last year's resurgence. Simon Black's team-first philosophy is a legacy living on in former teammates. For Steph Martin, playing round two would have been impossible, tearing a knee ligament game one. The second it happened, I was I was really flat. It's very good timing because the doctor, I think, had just found out that the season was going to be put on ice for a bit so he could sort of allay some of my fears. The Ruckman drafted to Brisbane eight years ago as an understudy to Jonathan Brown, who alongside Simon Black was inducted into the Hall of Fame overnight. You feel like you're bulletproof in that forward line with him. That's a pretty special trait because you can't say that about many people. But uh, the confidence that he gave everyone around him because he knew exactly what he was going to do, he's going to put his body on the line. But Black's influence was the most profound. Three premierships of Brownlow, Norm Smith. He's the AFL's most decorated player. If you submit yourself to the team, your individual um, accolades can come along the way. And I guess I'm one of the benef beneficiaries of that. I was lucky to play in a great group. It's almost a, an inverse relationship, I find. Some of the greatest achievers are the most humble, so... Um, that's probably what I learnt from him. It got Brisbane to the top of the ladder last year, even more important in this COVID-affected season. It holds true for every generation. If you really commit to each other, that's how you're going to get the best out of yourselves. We're all thinking it would be a very special one to perform well in because of the small amount of adversity. Ben Davis, 7 News. The head coach of the Australian swim team is walking away from the job for family reasons. After nearly seven years in charge, Jacko Verheren will return to his homeland, the Netherlands, in September. Swimming Australia unable to convince him to stay on for an extra year after the Tokyo Olympics were postponed. In high performance, you can't compromise, so you can't have your head coach being regularly overseas and high performance here, so that wouldn't be a good choice. Respected Olympic team coach Victorian Rowan Taylor will take on the role. And Shane, that's our midweek sport. All right, thank you, Webby. Queenslanders will soon be able to shop in a very different looking Coles. Coles Local is a smaller scale boutique style supermarket with Turinga, the first suburb to experience the store. Designed to feel like your humble corner store, but with a difference. We're really excited to bring this award-winning concept to Queensland. This is Coles Local, a smaller scale supermarket created for inner city suburbs. What you'll see is a lot of local produce, a lot of local items that you couldn't see all across Australia. Already three in Victoria and one in New South Wales. Now it's Queensland's turn. I think it's going to be brilliant. The more people to Turinga, the better, really. But some local businesses businesses in Turinga not so keen. We have Injapelli on one side and Twong on the other, so it's not really too needed. The vacant block sits on the corner of Mogul and Swan Road. Council concerned about traffic congestion on an already busy intersection. There's plenty to look at in regards to the bulk, the size, the scale, the parking and of course the traffic management. A second Coles local will be built in the CBD but at this stage even the company doesn't know whether the Turinga or City store will open its doors first. Woolworths too changing the way we shop. Paper curry bags now available for shoppers. Back to the future for supermarket shopping. Brittany Lane, 7 News. The cruise ship industry was left devastated by the global pandemic. Now it's trying to win back travellers with monster deals. And at the moment it's just 13 degrees on the Sunshine Coast. Not quite as cold as to, uh, tonight, rather. I'll have the forecast coming up next. The full story. The answers you need. Every night, turn to 7 News at 6 o'clock. OK, Dan, you know the drill. No, 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 we don't stop there, Dan. This is new up-and-go, no-added sugar. The goodness of original up-and-go, only now available with no-added sugar. Now we're talking, Dan. Now we're talking. New up and go, no added sugar. It's next level goodness. The biggest 
thing since joining my budget is that we've eliminated almost all of our debt. And honestly, we have my budget to thank for that. Call my budget now for your free consultation. If you were injured on the road, get advice before it's too late. Contact Shine Lawyers to access compensation through your superannuation. Yeah, I've heard Shine can help. Shine Lawyers, let's right wrong. Stratco has all the offers you need during the Stratco Stock Tag Sale. Get 72 months interest free on patios and sheds and pay nothing for the first 12 months. Or get a $500 gift card before the end of the financial year on a Stratco Outback patio. T's and C's apply. Buy online at stratco.com.au and we'll deliver to your house or click and collect. Plus, get a non-contact quote and interactive custom design while you talk with a design consultant over the phone. So, you bring the dream, Stratco will bring the how-to. Tough times don't excuse tougher times at home. Even in crisis, there's no place for abuse or domestic violence. If you're worried about your actions or relationship, help is available online and by phone 24-7. For free, confidential advice and counselling, contact Men's Line. There's no place for abuse or domestic violence. Help is here. Authorised by the Australian Government, Canberra. Hey, Tina, can you please slice the lettuce, tomato and onions, toast the buns, uh, grab the sauce and mayo and... Oh, and bring the meat. Take a break from cooking and get Hungry Jack's Flame Grill Whoppers delivered now on Uber Eats or Menu Lock. Hungry Jack's Delivery. The burgers are better. Customers in Queensland told us that they saved on average $179 when they switched their comprehensive car insurance online to Budget Direct. So why not get a Budget Direct quote today? When the road calls, here's the very best way to answer. The BMW X3 S Drive 20i from 69900 Drive Away. Joy is coming. I've never seen anything like this. On a brand new night, which spectacular acts will blow you away? You're fearless. Incredibly beautiful. Get ready for one hell of a night. That was the moment we'd be waiting for. You Britain's Got Talent, Thursday, 7.30. 19 years, six months was the day that I found out that I was a dad. This is for you, my son. Home and Away, weeknights on 7. This weather report brought to you by the BMW 3 Series. Making news tonight, US police have changed tack, allowing peaceful protesters to go on well after lockdown. Australia is in recession for the first time in almost 30 years. Our GDP fell 0.3% following coronavirus and bushfires. And police have arrested the stepmother of four-year-old Willow Dunn, charging her with murder. The cruise ship industry knows it has a long way to go to regain passengers' trust, but it's confident it can with cheap deals and new health measures. Local companies say it's never been a better time to see Australia and travel Australian. The nation's largest locally owned cruising operator is ready to return to the water. It just needs its Australian customer base to come along for the ride. They're adventurous people and um, you know, renowned for, for roaming, the, uh, roaming the globe. Coral Expeditions has been operating out of Cairns for 35 years. Four ships, all Aussie crew members and stunning destinations to sail, hidden gems on Australian shorelines. There's a good mix of uh, you know, great natural environments, um, history and culture along the way. COVID-19 has ravaged this industry. Experts are confident it can recover with incentives. So companies are promoting dirt cheap prices and reduced deposits. Blue Lagoon Cruises has 70% off deals. Carnival Cruises, 38% off. And Royal Caribbean, 30% off. Above all, the industry is promising passengers can cruise with confidence with a new health framework. And that includes reviewing the screening and the testing options, the new technologies, sanitation. Today's announcement of a long-term economic recession effectively means spending grinds to a halt across most sectors, but especially tourism, where spending is deemed a luxury rather than necessity. Tourism operators right now are battling harder than most to crawl out of this hole. For local companies, the message is plain sailing. Do it a little bit differently and go and see some, some of the, um, you know, the less explored regions of Australia. Robert Ovadia, 7 News. Weather now, here's Tony. 
Thank you, Max. Hello again. We shivered through the coldest morning of the year for some parts of southern Queensland today, but the trade-off lighter winds today meant that it felt a little bit warmer in the sunshine. Checking the numbers, Canungra, Greenbank and Bedesert all dropped to just one degree, make that nine up to a top of 22 in Brisbane. Onto the chart, high pressure down south has been pushing cool air into Queensland. Lighter winds overnight meant that winds, uh, well, the lighter winds meant that more heat escaped than it was pretty nice in the sunshine today. Tomorrow that high moves a little bit closer, our winds turn just onshore. We'll see some more humidity than cloud returning from late morning. Across our great southern land tomorrow, no rain of note for the capitals. Canberra down to minus two overnight, then sunny skies. A possible shower just for bayside or coastal suburbs in Sydney. Back home to Queensland in the tropics, a possible shower around Innisfail and the exposed coast, but can should remain dry. Showers likely to pick up there and in Mackay from Friday through to the weekend. In the south, still some frost through southern inland parts, mainly the downs and central highlands and coalfields this time, not quite as widespread as this morning. Otherwise, just some patchy cloud on the coast, but remaining dry. Harvey Bay, 22 degrees. Across the southeast, a bit more humidity around, so that'll bump overnight temperatures up a degree or two. Then some cloud picking out from late morning into the afternoon, but remaining dry. Caboolture tracking for 22 degrees. Across the suburbs, bayside spots should stay in double figures tonight. Redcliffe, 11 up to 21. On the bay, south southeast leads up to 25 knots. They'll be stronger for Gold Coast offshore waters, and a strong wind warning has been issued there. Plenty of subtly swell developing too offshore. So in Brisbane, that patchy cloud picking up into the afternoon. Slightly warmer on 11 tonight before a top of 22 degrees. Then looking further ahead, not too much change for a while. We're looking at dry tops of 23 degrees for Friday, Saturday and Sunday. In Ipswich, a touch warmer as we normally expect. Saturday and Sunday, dry tops of 24 degrees. On the Gold Coast, showers now set to pick up from Sunday, more so into next week, a top of 21 degrees by next Wednesday. And Sunshine Coasters, well, you are a bit more exposed to these onshore winds, so showers are possible most days, but more likely into next week, especially Tuesday and Wednesday with an 80 percent chance of rain. Now as that cloud thickens the nights will warm up just a little bit. Sounds good to me. Thanks for that Tony. And that's all from us this Wednesday. Thanks for your company. Sunrise is back in the morning from 5.30 but for now from all the team we hope you have a very good night. Good night.